My name is Leonie Castellino. I am an American fiber artist. From 2000, I have been collecting the clothing of the minority tribes, initially the Miao in China, from my first visit to the old Panjie Yuan market in Beijing. I was bewitched by the beauty and technical virtuosity of Miao embroidery. Patches like this were unpicked from traditional garments, which were of use no longer, deconstructed clothing for sale. Instinctively, I started collecting the clothing of the Miao and then the hill tribes of Vietnam and Thailand. I look at the incredible needlework with awe and reverence. This is Motanai. There is no other word in any language that best expresses this Japanese concept of respect. Motanai embodies this value of preserving life that surrounds us. We reuse and revive until its natural existence is fully spent. Let's look at the design and detail of this embroidered patch. We see lines, spirals, triangles, color and texture. In this video, I will introduce you to the clothing of the hill tribes of Vietnam and Thailand. To appreciate their unique ethnic identity, we will first discover what to look for in this design and in five other miniature patches of the Hmong tribe in Chiang Mai. They use lines, squares, diamonds, triangles, circles, diagonals, and staircases. When we visit with, with a few of the different tribes in Vietnam and Thailand, you will recognize identity and why embroidery is their visual language. Patterns reflect beliefs and folkways. Let's look at this detail. A spiral in a triangle. The spirals are tiny, 5 8 inch in diameter. They are outlined by a light cord that is couched or sewn in place with a darker silk thread. Count the threads in each spiral. There are eight or nine. The outer line of the spiral has curves. It is breathtaking in its beauty and design. In this miniature patch, we see a green spiral in a circle of pink and blue dots in a diamond formed by staircases. The diamond is in a square. The two squares are within a rectangle. This rectangle in red embroidery is two and a half inches wide and just one and a quarter inches high. The stitch in green and orange embroidery is called switchback darning stitch. The diamond design is bold. The pattern is a repetition of squares, which ascend or descend in a staircase. The use of color is magnificent. Our eyes move with the tiny dots in orange. A silk pink braid is used in this elegant design. Here is the use of the staircase again, but now with an opening for a square. The triangles and orange dots within the squares give it life. And the square is just 3 16th of an inch. The rectangle with the pink silk braid is two and a quarter inches by one and three eighth inch high. This is the most complex of the designs so far. The blue rectangle is three and a quarter inches wide by two inches high. The cloth is blue and there are five other colors. So let's analyze this design. We start with the outer red rectangle. In the center of the patch at the bottom are two corner brackets in red and black. The suggestion of two squares. Within the suggested square, there's a central square outlined in orange and black with an opening at the bottom corner. Tiny colorful squares within the white squares run in diagonal parallel lines. This design has movement. 
It is done in cross stitch and a running stitch. Now, who are these people who adorn their clothes with this sophisticated embroidery? Their legends recall the war with the Han Chinese more than 2,000 years ago, from a land north of the Yellow River, which was north of Beijing. In every subsequent war, the Miao forfeited territory to maintain their ethnic identity, and then migrated further south and west into the mountains of southwest China, and later penetrated the remote mountains of the neighboring countries. Preservation of their history, traditions, animist beliefs is primary to their identity. They have no affiliation to any political entity. Social scientists refer to them as outsiders who occupy a social space. They are the minority tribes. Outside China, the Miao are known as Hmong. In time, they established their own cultures in tribal subgroups. They don't have a written language, but their history is recorded in their clothing. Each tribe maintains their identity with distinct textile traditions, with motifs that are symbolic, passed down from mother to daughter, generation to generation, over centuries. Preserving their history of 2,000 years is sacred, recorded in their visual language of embroidery. So let's meet some of the hill tribes in Sapa, Vietnam, and Chiang Mai in Thailand. Sapa is a small town in the mountains, 4,900 feet above sea level in northwest Vietnam. In these high remote mountains bordering China, subsistence farming provides for their basic needs. Cultivating the steep terrain is labor intensive. Men and women work the land and life is not easy. This home is in a village outside the town, but in the region of Sapa. Living conditions are primitive. Poverty is widespread. Some hamlets are remote and their way of life has barely changed over the centuries. The Red Dao is one of the four main tribes in Sapa. The others are the Tei, the Ge, the Hmong, who are 50% of the population of the minorities. The Fla Hmong are distinctive in their colors, from the headscarf, cape, jackets, sleeve bands, front apron, skirt, bag, and leggings. The glorious skirt of the Fla Hmong the top band is usually blue, traditionally batik. This one is a commercial print. The middle band is this glorious handwork in orange, and the lower band is usually a black or blue velvet. The cross stitch design has squares, diamonds, triangles, and lines. See the arrows within the square. The patchwork on the left in red, white, and black lens drama. These distinctive borders are made with rows of one eighth inch braids, machine sewn next to each other. In the image on the right, you can see the stitching lines on the reverse of the skirt. The skirt is voluminous and heavy. Commercially printed skirts are the death knell for tribal culture. The elders are resisting the idea of schools. Who would teach the next generation their culture? Urbanization offers alternatives to subsistence farming, but change is in the air. However, their disadvantage wherever they move is their lack of schooling and limited education. Now meet the black monk. Their hair is styled, ornamented with accessories. The sleeves of their jacket has their identity. 
a simple skirt underneath the long vest, a front and a back apron, a bag in orange and leggings. This is their dress. This distinctive embroidery is on their sleeves of their jackets. This image was from the front of a little boy's cap. The embroidery is dimensional, which is worked on patches of fabric for hints of color, which is then attached to the base. The stitches are cross stitch, double twist knot stitch, and pulling stitch. We aren't familiar with some of these stitches. This is a typical outdoor site in every village. Indigo stained hands holding needle, thread and cloth. Embroidery is breath. These young women are from the Lo Lo tribe, which is one of the smallest ethnic tribes in Vietnam. Patchwork decorates the front and back of jackets, and this is a daily dress. There are more than a dozen different clans, each with their own attire. Interestingly, in the past, this tribe had their own hieroglyphic system of writing with 140 roots. The writings were usually inscribed on thin wood board, animal skin, or crude paper. However, today, not many people understand them. The spirit of Motanai a detail of a bed cover from the skirts of the monk. An enterprising woman made these beautiful bed coverings for the tourist market in Sapa. She removed patches of embroidery, see the upper right corner, to create negative space in these embroidered panels. And in the Hmong village in Sapa, a woman in her 80s had this very well used old bed cover drying outside her home. I fell in love with it. She was so astonished when I inquired if it was for sale. It is one of my treasures. It's imbued with the spirit of this woman. It's so old. I think it must have been made from her skirts. Now let's travel west to Chiang Mai in northern Thailand to visit the tribes of the Hmong, the Min, the Akha, the Lahu, the Lisu, and the Karen. Let's meet the Karen tribe. This is a traditional weaving design. The dress of the Karen tribe is not what we have seen so far. The sarong is woven. The style of the blouse is traditional, but this particular blouse has seed work and embroidery. Only the blouse of the mountain dwellers, known as the Squaw Karen, have seed work. Another blouse of a Squaw Karen woman. Embroidery between the woven lines. These Karen women are known as a poor Karen, the plains dwellers. Her blouse is of a typical style, unadorned. As a textile artist, language was not a barrier in this village. I loved my day observing this laborious handmade process, as did the women who shared this with me. Flax is one of the oldest cultivated plants in human history. Cloth is made from stripping the cellulose fibers that grow within the stalks of the flax plant. The taller the plant, the longer the fibers to spin. We call this cloth made from flax linen. Color varies by species of indigo plant and additives from other plants can produce a purple. This Hmong woman is known for the high quality of her work. She's batiking a panel for a skirt, which is typically four yards long. 
Batik artists will love this image as they will be fascinated with these indigenous batik wax tools. The applicator heads are triangular. The top one has a single opening and the lower one has a double. She was so amused that I was so keen to purchase them. Because these are typical batik chanting tools from Java. Batik artists are familiar with these. This is a familiar sight. Women embroidering anywhere and everywhere. The style of clothing and embroidery of the Mian tribe are different. The pants are embroidered. And this is a detail of that woman's pant. The top has this dramatic red fringed collar and this type of cross stitch embroidery is on the shoulders. Another treasured memory of the woman who made this skirt. An incredible work of artistry. There is so much process involved in creating this skirt. Pleating is laborious. A substance made from certain roots is applied over the fabric. It is then stretched and tied around a drum. Each tiny pleat is formed by moving the fabric with a straight tool, after which there's a drying process to make it permanent. The hip yoke has a band of beautiful stitches to hold it in place. These garments are made with spiritual fervor and love to maintain the traditions of family, clan and tribe. We bid farewell to these women from Chiang Mai in Thailand and Sapa in Vietnam. I will conclude with images of a few pieces of deconstructed clothing of the white Hmong. I find this waistband breathtaking. It is delicate yet bold. White square patches are appliqued onto silk. By now you can appreciate the variations of the design elements we identified earlier. Look at the detail on the right. The white square is a single piece of cloth with cutouts and every square is precisely two and three eighth inch. This is appliqued or attached onto green or pink silk. Within each staircase are tiny dotted right lines in red. It gives the illusion of depth. Now focus on the middle image. The white borders separating the colors are not embroidery stitches. They are strips of silk attached with tiny machine stitches. Are they 1 32nd of an inch? Every time I look at this waistband, I'm filled with awe and reverence. What type of needles do they use? How do they see? They don't use glasses. These are the sleeves from the jackets of the White Hmong tribe in Chiang Mai, Thailand. I was fascinated by the variations of design of spirals, triangles, diamonds. Each sleeve has individuality. This is a detail from another sleeve of the White Hmong. The bands on the sleeve we just discovered are created with a single piece of cloth in white, which is appliqued onto black fabric. The design of the white fabric has cutouts. An incredible detail in this small triangle from one of the sleeve bands. We see variations of the same pattern on a Hmong apron. We met the flower Hmong and the black Hmong in Sapa. This is the clothing of the white Hmong in Chiang Mai. A new spiral arrangement. Tiny stitches of color around the spiral. 
This concludes this presentation of the clothing of some of the hill tribes of Vietnam and Thailand. In 2014, I was invited to exhibit at Seas of Blue Asian Indigo Art at the Charles B. Wang Cultural Center at Stony Brook University in New York. This is my homage to Mong. It was created from the skirts of the hill tribes. It's given me great pleasure to share this extraordinary textile arts of these highland people of Vietnam and Thailand. Thank you.